this is this is really ridiculous. Hello, hello. This phone is so slow. It's really, really ridiculous. But we are not inside. We're outside. But of course, I have my phone, and I said, "Let me start the show. Let me start the show anyway on time." If I would have known, I would have probably waited another hour. But why not? Let me know if you can hear me. I'm gonna go to where the comments are, and we are live. We are live. Let me know if you hear too much sound. Let me know the state of things. Because these phones can be so janky, phone signals, and I'm going to have to cover up this little mic with my hand because I know the wind all of a sudden started acting up really bad. So let me know as you file in what the state of things are. Already we have three people in, nine people in. We're going to get down on it. We're going to give you a little visual in a second. You know, I always try to keep things fresh and new, loud and clear, Indigo King. One, 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 one. Thank you, brother. Grand rising and peace to you. We're out here taking a little walk. Let me let me give you a little visual of us out here. You know, we try to do things a little different. Let me let me uh this thing is slow, so just give me a second. I don't want to hit the wrong thing. We got a Chinese phone, but my other iPhone busted up, and I said, you know what? I'm not paying for another one. I got this Chinese phone that seemed to work really good at one point. And now it just conked that on me. So let me put this up here so you can see it. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Let me see if I can turn it sideways the way I like so you can see everything. And we'll leave it like that, but since we're loud and clear. So give me a second. We're enjoying the sun. What is it, 304 out here in Accra, yeah. Ghana? And you Very see hot. who. You Very see who's hot. next to me. <laughs> greetings, greetings, gre greetings <laughs> to y'all, my brothers and sisters. How y'all doing today? I hope y'all are doing well. <laughs> We're out here walking around, and, and, and it's very hot. Yes, our screen it's is kind of our screen is kind of freezing on us, but it's grabbing the signal. So when you see that, just keep talking. Yes. And okay. um, let me know if you can hear her loud and clear because this <laughs> is what you're hearing. This is what you're seeing her talk through. The thing yeah. I have on. So yeah. we're going to continue walking. Keep the right angles in the sun. It's, it's a beautiful day. It's very yeah. hot, though. Yeah, Ghana is a very hot place. Yeah. I mean, hot, steamy hot. But sometimes you get a lot of wind, so it, which is good. Um, I really like the mountainside. Down here on the flat is so hot. <laughs> so hot. Like in Jamaica, when you're in Kingston, Old Arbor, Spanish Town, Portmore area is very, very hot. Maypen, very, very hot. So that's how, and Ghana is hotter, but um, you get a little breeze sometimes, um, but it's, it's, it's steaming today, steaming out Yeah, here. it is. It's a, it's, it's, it's a good kind of heat. Yes, you've been sweating this a way. lot. So now where we're walking, the sun doesn't favor lighting our faces up. So even though the sun is out, it's going to, going to kind of cast the shadow sideways. I'm always aware of that. <laughs> You know, but you can yes. see, let's turn it around, let them see what's in front of us. You can still hear us. Mm -hmm. And we're still going to get into the topic, but yes. I'm so laid back and relaxed and not uptight when doing these shows because I've been doing it so long. And I know that you all understand, like malfunctions happen. Now, for some reason now, it is hot out here. If this particular, if this thing freezes up and knocks us off, it's because it's being hot. And I don't know what I'll do because I'm, we're not near you know, uh, the equipment and everything. No, we can, we can walk up. We can walk up. I'm good. Because I got the towel. I know it's, I'll probably cover it up and let people see what's in front of us, you know. Where's the towel? Right here in my pocket. <laughs> 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 oh, wow. Is it me or does my head look extra big? It's like it's getting taller or something. Oh, I don't know, you know. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but today's topic is how to chase your woman away. And yesterday we spoke about the men, uh, the uh, the women, how to how to lose how to lose your man. And so I wanted to be fair because mo most of the points that we're going to bring up are going to be similar. They're going to be similar, but we have things as men that are very unique in a way that we have to address. And with that whole dynamic and chemistry between men and women looking at it from the other side i think it's a little more complex because for the most part 
women know what it is in a relationship that they should do. Hopefully they do. And if they don't, it may be because of their upbringing or the trauma they dealt with and they don't want to deal with it no more. They may know what to do, but they're like, I'm not doing that. And again, for those who want to say I'm a simp, just say that I'm a little more understanding than most who want to frame it a certain way, you know? And um, how to chase your woman away. Well, men, they say men don't mature as fast as women. That's not always the case, but I would kind of agree with that. But we can say now in this so-called modern time that maybe you want to go down there okay okay cool in the modern time that um it has complicated things more i re i refer to the stereotypical grandmother before she was a grandmother when cook keep the house clean and it's not a sexist statement she did it with joy because she knew she had a man who was dedicated and committed to her that was out there knocking the world out for. And he knew what he had at home. He knew the value of what he had at home. And that particular positioning was valued back then. Your home, your home came first. And for that grandmother who at one time, even before she was a mother and then became a mother, knew how important it was to be a homemaker. But with a lot of women today, and again, this is about the men, but we're setting a little frame work on it. And when we get back inside, I'm going to really dig them guts out mentally. Wordplay. <laughs> wow. Let me just show them this here. Somebody's growing something on this open lot of them. Come back here. Growing very sweet. It's weeds, but, but it, it, weeds. We, we, weeds grow, don't they? Those are weeds. You get hungry enough. When the apocalypse <laughs> comes, you will be boiling weeds and eating the weeds. Eat the leaf. That's what I'm saying. You can chew the leaf. <laughs> it's getting eaten. I'm telling yeah, you. If you're hungry, if something's green yeah. and growing, it's going in the pot, and it's greens. I don't have oh, to. Yeah. It could be weed greens, collard greens, I, any kind. Yeah, but seriously, mm -hmm. sometimes you, not to get off topic. Or what but look at these children about. paranoid now, covering their face up. <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. And not to get off topic, but mm -hmm. you know, a lot of the stuff we see out here, a lot of times we are scared to eat it, but mm -hmm. you'll be surprised. Right. You take those things and you saute well, them. It, well, well, what, it what, what, so what is good. it? What is it that's here that Ghanaians have growing here um, that they let grow because they don't eat? What is it? Um, what's the thing that if you don't deal with it right, it's, aki. it's for aki. There's aki growing all over the place, and most Ghanaians don't touch it. Yeah. They're scared of it. Yeah, because they don't know. You know, it's not everybody know how to use certain kind of food, so yeah. they think it's poison when they see it. Maybe somewhere along the line, somebody died or something. I got sick yeah, behind it, you can get and the poison. word got around. Don't touch that mm -hmm. stuff. You can get poisoned by it. Mm -hmm. it Actually, it's not open. It has to be open before you can eat it. Right, right. You know, so some people probably pick it up with you and probably open it themselves. It's poison. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, because once it's open, once that once the hockey is open, then that gas and everything it, it comes out of it. Right. So you know it's ready. So, but. I guess people do that and probably didn't know. Probably somebody, as you say, died from eating it. It poisoned people. For yeah. Me. That's not a joke. So you got to be careful with it. True, true. I love Aki, but he doesn't love me. <laughs> well, you say he doesn't love you. Yes, because sometimes he it runs you. Stomach hurt. hurt or run? No, not run. <laughs> Let's be specific here. No. <laughs> I don't know if they can see those mountains up there in front of us. Man, it's so it's such a beautiful mountain. Like you're down here and you look over the mountain in the night. It is so beautiful. But me, I love to live on the mountain because it's cooler and all the breeze that you get, you know, from the ocean, from the rivers, the lakes and the springs and stuff like that. So right. it's much much better. Fresh, nice here and all that stuff. So yeah, but I'll let you get back on top. <laughs> oh yeah. No, no, no. We free no, we're almost there. And when we get there, we're gonna really bite in. But I brought the phone with me so that in our walk, if we were still, I didn't want to rush or rush the walk. I wanted him to get out of the house and walk a little bit. Yeah. You, know, you do the show, you sit down, 
the whole time and doing the show. So but see, folks don't realize what it yeah. takes that even after the show and editing and putting stuff up and graphics, getting ready for the next show, I, I can't say it enough, but I don't want to bore people with it. Some days I don't get any uh, sun at all because even last night I was supposed to get in bed on time. I lay down for a little bit and something said, oh, you forgot to do this one thing. So I went back to the computer and then I saw five more things I had to do. So I said, what am I going to do? Wait for it, you know, to tomorrow. Then it's time sensitive. It's not there. Nobody will see it. And I got my hangups. You know, I got my hangups with little pet peeves with things like that. Just want to show folks this nice little house coming up here with that guard shack on it and how nice they have it right there. And look, there's a lot of places being built right now in this particular neighborhood. And it's coming up. And a lot of these places weren't even here. And some people would say, why do you want to go over there by that, uh, you know, by that, where there all those empty lots are? Well, you got to have a vision of the dream, you know. But, um, but you have, everywhere you go, it's going to be where most places, even in the U.S., all over the world, you go places, and sometimes you use the first one that buy a house. Right. In that place. You, and you get it cheaper. Yes. But see, it, it's, it's those last two or three houses that's more that cost a whole lot, you know, that you have to spend for. So, oh, yeah. but this place here, I know somebody's probably looking at it. Uh, I'm going to show you. And this is not where we're building, but I'm just saying the concept of it all, where you see the guard shack right there, you see the high wall, you see the um, the uh, top, the little potted plants, and they got the things tinted yeah. and whatnot. Yeah, let me get out of here. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so... Bear like with I, us. Like I, I was talking, I know they drive crazy, and so you have to get upset with them, like they're getting the they're gonna drive it so fast. Right. And I was watching a video in the US. Um, I'm trying to remember what state is it. Um, it's not Ohio. I, I'm you project your voice this way. Yeah. I'm trying to remember what state it was, but there's this Jamaican dude came up from Jamaica about four months ago. He, I guess he come up and do the work. You know, like a lot of farm work. Like they come up and work at the hotels and different places mm -hmm. and he was driving <laughs> and how the hell you that car that he driving a hundred in the the, the the cops pull him over a hundred oh you you were on there with him or no i was watching oh. the video oh it was a video okay yeah and where was in this the u.s in the u.s and he was driving 125 miles an hour and and then he's talking about um like he was a little nervous Right. And, you he was know, trying to make excuses. He was not really, but he was saying that he just got married on Friday. So what they got to do with him? Excited and blah blah blah. No, no. And what, maybe just because he he got scared when the cop pulled him over, you know. He you, started talking all kind of craziness. Yes, yeah. You, you just come up from Jamaica four months up here driving 125 um, miles an hour. He gave him a ticket for 625. Yeah, well, it'll make them think twice because you just know, because you got married or if that was a legitimate thing, you know, really? what about a child's life? Yeah, Some child running out in the road. That is dangerous. Right. Man. You're not the only, you don't own this. It's not your own private mm -hmm. track. You, you know what I mean? You got to be so careful with that. Some people just speed in like this. Mm -hmm. They don't have good sense when they head. I have to tell one driver out here. I say, she's like, you don't have good sense in your head. And if you don't slow this vehicle, I'm going to pepper spray your ass. <laughs> so the way he was speeding and it's almost and, like they want to get into an no, accident but the way he was speeding and going on and driving bad and he wasn't listening to what i was saying and then he ended up trying to pass the other driver uh one other the the, the, the treasure and they flipped he themselves over and then when he's do that the other treasure wasn't giving up and he wasn't giving up so the other treasure hit him mm -hmm. hit him and then when they, when he got hit on the on on the right side the passenger side mm -hmm. then and they, they start cussing at each other and i say you see what i'm talking about y'all need to let me out for this structure because y'all are crazy <laughs> y'all driving a hundred miles an hour going up on the mountain <laughs> taking curve make straight and talking. what did you say so, taking curve make straight What's yes it? you go around the curve and you take it make straight that's what they do oh, in like Jamaica. when these guys driving they, they they're going around the curve and they take it uh, we always say they take it make straight like yeah it's on a straight road oh yeah right 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 you know like they, they, they don't have to slow down because yeah you're going around the turn. curve right you don't you don't slow down or anything you can wow. kill yourself and kill wow. people you know it's, wow it's just only a matter of time you keep doing that you know yes yes 
Hmm? Want to go down there? Oh, you. Oh, right, 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 right. I'm gonna break for the meringue down the side there. We 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 don't con- we don't we, we don't condone this type of activity. Don't start saying here that. on the Landscape Show. We see no. criminal activity. We don't we don't pre- we don't uh, condone this. No, you no, know? no. Don't listen to what Lad said. You know? Don't do like this at that. home. It's this this like is that. Ghana. This is not America. This You'll is, get locked up. In Ghana here. Even in America, nobody ain't gonna bother you like that. But in Ghana, you know, you, they just might. You know, times are rough. Okay, all right, Mrs. Skirv. No, they're not gonna be like you. in Ghana. Um, you come and you cut a piece of meringue or stuff like that. Uh huh. Nobody you. See, the see man that? just walk and pop it down and throw it on the ground. See that? Because I was gonna get it. So you're gonna take it now? Yeah. And so this is meringue. Yes, the meringue, and um, I'm gonna use it. Please ask permission for the property owner before you do this type of activity. <laughs> don't listen to like that. This is Ghana. Nobody don't bother you. Landscurve does not roadside. condone. It's on the roadside. Landscurve does. Look at this place they're building here. Solid stone, poured concrete. This is the way they should build places in America. You know? Anyway. But anybody can do Wait that. now. Uh, is, that, is that a bit much now? Go inside, You're increasing the sentence here. Yeah, no, I'm waiting for you. Don't do don't do this at home, y'all. Don't go in anybody else's yard and take no, anything. No, I know, I know, I know. I'm just don't playing with you. I'm playing with you. Because we are not in the yard. Are we gonna get in the topic. No, you got somebody eyeballing you now already down there. Where? Down there, look there. No, they ain't gonna say nothing. No, they ain't. I'm gonna use this to make drinks, y'all. You gonna so what you gonna drink this tonight? Yes, it's some ginger. Please make that drink. Please make it from early. <laughs> that drink you make. Please tell them again what's in there. And I like it cold. That's you know what I mean? No, I like it cold. Oh my God! When you gave me that thing there, I could have drank myself silly. No, it wasn't alcohol. Anything alcoholic. It's key. Yeah. See, they're getting them bonus beats today. They're getting, they're getting the bonus footage today of us out in the street before the show. It's different teeth, y'all. Teeth. Look at her. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, come on. We, we, I'll wait for you. <laughs> Listen, I'll come out here later. I'll come out here later on, under the cover of darkness, and damn near strip this whole tree. You see there? All right. Look here, lad. The plant lady. That's her new nickname. The plant lady. When she walks past the plant, if it's dying, it starts growing. Of course, it is. Plant lady. I love the plant. Lily vegan. Lily fire. Lily Scurve. You gotta decide, decide what name you use. What you gonna take it from there too? Mm-hmm. Look at it. You smiling too. Yeah, you see all these buds you just eat it. I just keep them all you, up. Make sure no bugs are in there. Buds. I know, but I'm saying make sure no bugs are in there. No. So you happy, you're yeah. satisfied? You see these? Yeah, what's up with you that? Just take these and eat them. Okay. These are good. Apart the property, I just go and pick them off the tree and eat them. The bees. The bees love bees. They, you know, they go and mm-hmm. pollinate bees and all that stuff. So we got we got we got to get back so we can get on topic here. Okay. You know, <laughs> we just give them a taste of what you will be doing soon. Show. Yeah, <laughs> for real. Look! 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 Look there! Look there! <laughs> look there! Trust me, I'm gonna. I think you have a I'm serious issue. You're coming back. I'm coming back to ask them for some of these. Okay, but. Well, yeah. You point out what you want, and I'll put on that mean face, and they'll leave me <laughs> no, alone. No, they're not going to. I'll put on that mean like face that. and flare my eyes. <laughs> Which is for a couple of weeks. A couple of pieces. Yeah. Uh, yeah let me hit this banner on. We got, a, we got nut cases out here, so we have to understand. I'm going to come back on with it. We're not cutting Joe off. You will hear us. We're just gonna put that back on. We make sure here. It's coming. Okay, good, good. When I get upstairs, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. We're 19 minutes and 49 seconds in. So we're gonna get inside and fire this stuff stuff up, y'all. We're gonna get right on topic. And Mr. Skur, please close your ears to what I'm going to say. I'm going to use some 
spicy words. I'm going to get into a zone. And then we're going to... Where, where are you going? Around the corner again? You tricked me. You tricked me. Where are you going? On the corner. On what counter? Noah, where are you going? Lord, she has a real serious issue. Okay. Let me open up this door. And um, we'll be in. Hold on, y'all. This is where you got to see a little bit of something. I got to find. Woo! I can't see the chat room, so pay me no mind for not responding. I'm very thirsty. Let me get something to drink here. And then we're going to cook it up. Then we're going to cook it up. Oh, life is wonderful. Life is good. Especially when you leave the dirt in the prior year. Okay, let's fire this up. We're going to make it happen. Woo. I'm sweating. I'm sweating. I'm sweating. Okay, let's open this up. I got to go through these different changes again. Because I have that two-factor way of logging in. And it has to go through my phone. Ah, Don't worry, y'all. I'm going to be amped in a second. Do not worry. We're going to cook this topic. As always, I hope you enjoyed a little bit of chit-chat there. But I'm going through my metamorphosis now and get the intensity going because this is something we need to talk about. Okay, this is going to come through. Now let's open up the program. Let's log in. Okay. Email. And thank you for bearing with me. I see everybody's still here, you know. I'm going to do more spontaneous stuff like this. Okay. Come on now. Pop in there. Six-digit code. Let me refresh this thing. There it is. There it is. Okay. Okay. Here's the code. Two. Doesn't matter. It's not something that's a lasting code, it's a temporary thing. So for all the hackers out, they don't get too happy. All right, let's fire this up. Let's enter inside. Let me get the microphone straight. I'm actually going to stay logged on to the phone in case there's any power uh, issues. But one thing I hate doing is putting on these uh, headphones because it sweats me up so much more. Okay, let's allow access. Let's stop this cam. Hey, I already showed my face, right? <laughs> What's the crowd? I was showing it again. But I don't wor want to worry about like, okay, I'm showing my face, whatever. I just want to focus on the words. And we will get a couple of rooftops in after this and some content. Just wanted to make sure Maybe Mr. Skurve and I may do a show or something. We'll see. Okay, there it is. Speaker. All right. Here we go. Microphone. That's what I want. Okay. So did he give it to you? I saw him out there. That's the guy that used to live over at the house. Okay. All right. Now you're going to hear an echo. I have to mute myself over here.
to um, let myself in. That would help a whole lot. <laughs> All right. Can you hear me now? Let me know if you can hear me loud and clear. I forgot which one to open up. I don't want to keep them both open. Can you hear me now? Okay, let's try opening this one up. Okay. I'm going to have to open up. No, no, this should, this should, um, Tracy Dunstan. Okay. Check, check me now. See if you can hear me now. Cause I know when I muted myself, it was on the phone. Okay. Let me go through the phone and see something here. Something's wrong. Something is terribly wrong. They're not hearing me. Yeah. Now this is open as far as what I can see, but let's see. Let's go into the phone. Let's open up the mic here on the phone. Now they're going to hear an echo for a second. I had it right, but it takes a little second. Okay. You good? Okay, I'm good. Brother Raw in the house. How are you? How's everybody? Okay. I'm, yeah, Tracy Dunstan. Yeah, yeah. She's on Facebook, though. The YouTube people can't see you, but I'm going to put you and highlight oh. you up. <laughs> Sister Tracy, how are you doing? Long time, long time. I hope you're doing well. I hope it's not too cold up there in New York. Well, let me tell you something. <laughs> Sister Tracy Dunstan deserves a visual. Hello. Give me a second. And I think I can put this <laughs> on. I think this is the one. This is the camera. Let's see. Hold on. Oh, that's... Hold on. Let me open up. You ever see this? This whole thing here. Let me see something for a second. Let me see. No, we can keep on talking. I'm trying to change the size of this of this uh actual page so I can get to the bottom where I can open a few things up. It's so crazy. Anyway, Tracy, Tracy, Tracy. Long time, long time. She said she's well. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Yes. That's yes. Good. Okay. All right. That works out just fine. I'm trying to figure out why. Okay, this is the wrong. Okay, I gotta rock that camera. That's the one. Okay. I want to open up the screen, but I can't because it's down there actually. See, I, mean, I gotta resize this. But you know what? We'll. I'll figure it out, we'll figure it out, and we'll rock with this. We'll rock with this. I know it's very simple sometimes. Yeah. How to chase your woman away. What do I mean by that? Well, some of your brothers out there, you all know exactly what I'm talking about because some of you, and again, just like I said before yesterday, that this is not a man bashing situation. The good men out here, you know who you are. And even some of the good men out here have made mistakes and learned from it. The problem is, is when you make a mistake and you didn't learn from it and you continue to do the same thing over again, but you end up blaming the women that you dealt with and you never learn. And you look around and you find yourself knocking on the door of being a senior citizen with the same cruddy toxicities blocking up your mental and emotional filters, bringing the same mess to the next relationship, leapfrogging from one relationship to the next, not realizing or wanting to realize that you are the cause of what you're doing. And again, I don't want to hear any simp talk because I'm not a simp. I shouldn't even have to say that. And I'm not going to disrespect sisters because, or to prove that I'm a man, to prove that uh, the women don't sway me that way. So now I'm going to speak from the eyes of merely a man. My wife is right here hearing me, so she knows I'm not speaking as a single man because I'm not. I'm just speaking from the place of manhood. So women are beautiful. Women are precious. Women are a gift from God, the creator. If you want to say most high, if you want to say whatever you want to say, they're gifts. Yes, and we know that we can put our seed in them and they can't procreate without us. But from what I'm hearing before we came along, they were doing just that. So I guess, <laughs> you know what I mean? But they're the ones that carry us around. And I say us because there's no man that came out of something else other 
than a woman. Now, maybe 20 years from now, or maybe two weeks from now, or maybe already, they're creating human beings without a woman, but I'm quite sure that's not going to be a full human being. And in me sp speaking about this, how to chase your woman away, I'm speaking about our people, right? The other people, the pink people, the pink parasites have enough things out there to deal with their psychosis, their way of thinking. But if you are in your natural state as an African, no matter where you are on the planet, you have a way of thinking and a vibration that they can't reach, that they try to feign, that they try to act like they know what we go through. This is why when we speak on such things, they feel like that little child who's a toddler in the kitchen trying to reach the top shelf where they know the cookies are, but they can't reach it. They could never reach it, right? So their vibration doesn't go as high as us. This is why they love to see us on a low vibrational level of decadence. They love to see us that way. It makes them feel good. It doesn't make them, they don't feel as short or as limited as they are with their recessive genes. So I'm speaking to the high vibrational brothers and sisters here, which if you're high vibrational, you wouldn't have this problem as a brother anyway, chasing your woman away. Now, like I say, and I say it all the time. As a man, I love women. But I'm not going to try to lay up in the bed with every woman I see. I have someone for that. But there's more than one way to love a woman by the way you respect them, by the way you enjoy their glow, their comfort, their warmth. There's nothing more soothing than when you are out in the outside world. And I said this yesterday, and there's some things I'm going to be redundant on and say it again. As a black man, you know all of the stuff you have to go through in the world. You know when you're on these jobs, how these supervisors treat you. You know when you're walking through the store, how people begin to follow you as though you're going to steal something, even though you have a pocket full of money. And when you come home, you want to come home to comfort. You want to come home to heaven. You want to come home to a place that makes you forget the outside world that's so toxic to us. Well, how do you have that? How do you cultivate that? Do you cultivate heaven on earth by beating your woman who is heaven on earth? Your woman who can take a house and turn it into a home? Yes, brothers are on their own and they can do things on their own. They can cook on their own. They can keep the place clean on their own. But you show me a brother who's single and by himself who can do everything for himself. And I walk in that door and within five seconds, I can tell you that is not as much of a home as when a woman is there, put it, in, put it in her touch. And we're talking about the good women now. We're not talking about them 304s that you see sometimes on Instagram. We have good sisters on Instagram, but you know what I mean. You have those who are on a lower vibrational level, and it's engineered that way. But the bottom line is, like I said, women are special to us, but for some reason, we start to chase them away. Maybe it's because we weren't taught. We used to always have men in our community who would mentor us on things. We had fathers who would show us things, not just by telling us, but by showing us. I came from a very loving family. My father loved and adored my mother. My mother loved and adored him and would do anything for him. And this is what I saw coming up. Like many of you know, my home and my childhood was damn near perfect. The only thing that bothered me is that I have an 11 year old, 11 year old, 11 years older than me, <laughs> brother, who always messed with substances. And I love him as a brother. He is my brother. We have different fathers. You know, my mother was caught out there as a young, pretty thing by old slickster. And um, that's what happened. And other than that, they did right by me. I had a very enjoyable childhood. I learned a lot. But whenever my brother came around and he wasn't straight, it was a problem because he wasn't allowed to be there. When he was okay, it was okay. So this is why in my makeup and in my wiring, I have always yearned for a brother. And this has been used uh, against me. People say, oh, I could kind of sense what this brother needs. He goes over and above for righteous males or righteous appearing males. So I had to deal with a lot with that. And I had to understand that about myself, but I'm completely healed from that yearning. And so I have brothers all over the world via social media and in real life as far as my real good close friends and inner circle of people who I've known over 40 to 50 years. Yes, 50 years. My friend Angelo, I've known him from 1969 when I was six years old. So I knew him for just almost about 54 years. Let me take a sip of this water, wet the whistle, we're going to continue to cook.
Oh, God. Got to get another sip, y'all. Bear with me. <laughs> ah. So, yeah, like I was saying, we all have, as men, our different challenges from our upbringing. Just because we might be black men and have a lot in common, especially how the society treats us, we all still have our individual things that we have to overcome. And we don't always overcome those things as men at the same rates. We may not have the close proximity to the females like others. Well, what do I mean? Well, some of us brothers grew up with a lot of sisters. Some of us had sisters that were older, younger, some that were dominant, some that had a big influence on us. Some had, didn't have that at all. I didn't grow up with any sisters. It was just me and my brother, but my brother was never around most of the time. So I grew up as an only child. So I had the example of my parents to show me what that type of love was. Yes, they had arguments. Yes, they had disagreements. But at the end of the day, it was all about a peaceful, quiet, loving home. And it was in that atmosphere that I was raised and I had a chance to explore myself. And I still, after that type of upbringing, wonder why I still had things that I would say was wrong with me. I don't mean wrong like something major that the world don't know, but just emotional quirks, right? One of my things was that my parents being a little older than most, because when I, when I was 27, my father passed away at 74 years old, right? When I was 34, my mother, or 31, my mother passed away at 64 years old. So they were a little older, especially my father, who was strong to the end, even though he had his uh, health issues toward the end. But I had this fear and I'm going to tie this into the topic, how I speak the way I do. I had this fear when I was younger, like after my mother had cancer in the 70s and she had to have her breast removed. And I saw how mortality is at a young age. That was back in 76. I was, uh, what, 13 years old when she had the operation. And I dealt with that. It really crushed me seeing how she went through different things to the last minute. And right before that tumor began to spread, she had the breast removed. And if it wasn't for my grand aunt who came from Ohio, who actually they were loaded, you know, they demanded that she go to Sloan Kettering Hospital on the east side of Manhattan. And when she got there, they only had hours to get that thing removed. And it was the whole breast they had to remove. And I had to deal and observe how my mother had to struggle, wondering if my father cared for her as much. She knew that he did. But women, you know, with something like that and the cosmetic look of things, it bothers them. You know, so I began to learn so much about adult relationships and different things from the examples that were around me, the discussions that I overheard and how my father never looked at her as any less. He loved her anyway. And this is why when I say you meet somebody, you love somebody, you commit to them. I don't care if they look so perfect when you met them. I don't care if they're 600 pounds drooling out their mouth and you got to wipe their backside every time they go, you still kiss them. So take care of her because that's the woman. It's not about the image. Now, yes, you meet somebody, you want somebody healthy, you want somebody who takes care of themselves. But when you have commitment, it's true commitment all the way through. And I think there's a lot of brothers who fall victim for the social media images and imagery where they see somebody with a physical body that looks so devastating. They jump right into a relationship, not knowing if they're compatible or not, or their lust takes over and they want this woman because of the lust factor and they're not really ready to commit to that woman. And when they meet the next woman with the smaller waistline and around the backside and the bigger, uh, uh, well-rounded anti-gravity breasts with lips that are so full, you know the ple pleasure they can bring, they jump from one to the other. And that's not right. Once you make that commitment, that's it. And a lot of us get angry at what we have at home because it's not like the woman they see in the street. Well, the woman you might have at home might be the best thing for you but because you're running around like crazy. When are you ever going to be happy? You go after this one. There's always going to be the next pretty woman. There's always going to be the woman with the hourglass shape, the woman who might throw a leg up even higher, arch her back even better. You can't base it on that. How many people these days stay in relationships to the point where they can say, hey, remember way back then? Remember this? Remember that? Life is short. I can't believe I'm telling people I'm, I'm almost 60 years old. It was just the other day when I was telling people, man, I'm getting 
I'm 16 years old next year. I'm getting older. I'm getting closer to having all my freedoms out in the world. Now I had my freedoms for decades looking around and a lot of the people that I know are dropping dead. So every day even more so is a gift. So we want to walk around in this earth in alignment so we can enjoy the time that we have. I don't want to have these idiosyncrasies and hangups where I appear to be okay. And anything right now with me that's not okay, I'm making it okay. I'm, I'm going to work with it. I'm going to make it okay. You know what I mean? No matter how big or how small it is, we have to take accountability for our lives because you know what? Wherever we find ourselves pretty much is because of the choices that we made. Now, I'm not throwing off on anybody who may be going through a sickness where it was more environmental than anything else. There's certain things we can't control. But within our relationships with the opposite sex, there are things that we control. And most of the time, we get involved in something and we know we're not ready. We know we're not ready for it. It's like when you go and you go to the store and you go to buy $300 worth of things and you only have $150 left on your overdraft protection. You know what I mean? You know you don't have it. You know you're not ready for it, but you go make the purchase anyway. And you pay more when they take that $35 out for each item, but you just have to have it. You'll pay more in heartache, wrecking up a woman's life and your life because you weren't honest. The best thing, and I tell ladies this too, the best friend that you have, and I'm not saying he's going to be your best friend, but that dude who says, listen, listen, I like you, but I'm more into that sexy body you got. Now, I know you got a career and you're real busy and you don't have a man. So maybe we can kind of meet each other up maybe two, three times a week, once a week, twice a week and take care of each other's needs. What kind of woman do you think I am? What are you talking about? But then, look, you get a man who says he loves you and he's committed to you and he would never hurt you and break your heart. But he's out there doing all type of stuff and it really breaks your heart. At least with the other dude, you can reject him because he told you what he was all about up front. That's why I said he just might be the best friend that you can have as far, I'm not saying uh, 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 bring him into your life, but he saved you years of heartache. And that one that you thought loved you, it may not be a body thing. It may be a finance thing. Maybe you have more money than him. Maybe, maybe you sacrificed and you're set now. And he played around with decades of his life and finds himself nowhere. Now he wants to get with you and charm you so he can get the benefits of your hard work. There's a lot of motivations out here. But if a man is real, he'll be real now. He'll be real 10 years from now. And he'll be real 30 years from now if he's to live that long. But the bottom line is that we chase our women away. Why do we chase our women away? Because we have toxic things about us that we did not work on. And then when it all comes out in the open and she calls us out on it, we want to blame her for the homework that we didn't do. When you go to school and you sit down in front of that test at that table to take that, that test and you're scared taking it because you know you didn't study. You know you didn't put the time in. You're just winging away and guessing it. And when they start calling out the grades when the test scores come back, it's the most humiliating thing. And they stop doing that in most schools. They should bring it back. Oh, uh, uh, Peter, 98. Tony, 68. Jessica, 92. Barbara, 100. Lance, 13. I never got a test score that low. I just used my name instead of calling out the names because somebody would say, hey, man, why'd you call my name out on the show with that? Were you trying to blow me up? You didn't put the time in. The same thing when we would go to bodybuilding competitions, especially as a teenager, because the grown men knew what it took. They've been doing it for years, so they're in shape. But lots of times we have guys that trained at home and trained half-ass at home and didn't have the older guys to teach us the right way to exercise, to teach us the right way to combine foods, to teach us the right way to cycle our training and know when to back off. And we had some guys that we stripped down to the back and we look at them. They just as smooth and fat and small and underdeveloped, no symmetry. We're like, wait a second. What is this guy thinking? And so we can tell anybody anything we want. We can act mature because, see, men are so good at doing that, especially the ones I knew locked up. You know, they're locked up. Did a 10-year bid, 8-year bid, 15-year bid, 20-something years. And when they write to those women that are in the outside world, notice I said those, 
It's a gamble for many of them. Over time, they have these pen pals and there's a certain type of woman that is attracted to, and this is not all, because I've seen some situations work out, attracted to that type of man who's incarcerated because it's that part of the woman that may not be working or firing properly who wants to take care of her man. And there may be an insecurity in this type of woman. So they gravitate toward those men who are like birds with broken wings or who are caged animals. And I'm not calling the brothers animals. And there's something about them because they know that they can't go anywhere. They know they're not cheating with another woman. You know, they might be messing with the prison guards or females. You don't know that. But now they will write with them, never met them before. You know, they might go up for a visit and meet this person. And then they're preparing a home for them. So when you come out, we can get married. It can be me or you. But this joker might have four or five women he's writing to like this. He don't give a damn. Just keep my books full. full. You know, keep money on my on papers, you know, straight so I can have commissary, my sneakers, whatever it is that I need. And when they get out, they don't go at any of them. They might go at one and disappear from the other four until they can find something better to reach out for. So a lot of men use women as receptacles. And when they're done with them and when they're used up, they want to move on to the next one, but they don't say, I'm done. Let me go find somebody. Like I always use the analogy where I say, it's just like a DJ who mixes in a song from the previous song. And if you listen hard enough, you hear this next tune coming in. You see what I mean? And so there's something already going on. They're lining up something and you find out too late and you get hurt. But what about these guys who they come in so beautifully like they're the best thing happening, presenting to you all the attributes, and they know how to act. And again, this is not every brother, but I'm just, okay, let me, let me highlight some of these. Uh, yeah, let me show some of the comments that are coming in on Facebook also. You can't ignore Facebook. Tamara Hickman. Let me hit another one here. People have to change their stinking thinking in order uh, to be better. One person can destroy so many lives because of the deception. You are so right, Peaches. You're so right. Let me just take another one. I like men who have worked at their lives like myself. Nothing comes easy, and I certainly know that phrase. African Empress, you are so right. Definitely. You know, all I can say to the women, take your time. But it doesn't mean that it's your fault if it doesn't work out. For some women, the kind that we spoke on yesterday, maybe it could be their fault. We do have that. But I'm talking about the good women, y'all. Don't come in the con comment section later on tomorrow. Oh, you can't say that about all. Oh, that means you haven't listened to what I have to say. When I do a show, I go in with surgical precision. I go in with surgical precision. So I'm not just spraying up the whole crowd because I want to hit one person. If I'm coming for an intellectual hit, it's going to be on that one person or type of person. I'm really not speaking to any of our sisters here. I'm not saying that anything that has happened, maybe in the past you may have had something to do with it. We're adults and we know it. I don't know. So I don't go around using a one-size-fits-all template to blame everybody because it has to be that way. Rena Marie. Much love to you. I'm glad to see you. And I see Sister Oyala also. Yes, we started back up our early shows today. And I know I haven't seen you for a while, but it's a good time sometime to take a break from social media. I always say I'm going to do it, but I'm not addicted, but I got to run my mouth. I'm going to run my mouth anyway, right? <laughs> but it's good to see you here. But time will take care of that. I'm going to say this one thing to the sisters and I'm going to go on and jump on some of these brothers. Take your time. Take your time. There's certain things that you see and, oh, <laughs> uh, well, soon we're going to say, come on out when everything of our projects are done. You know what I mean? Hey, we might run some kind of escape type workshop where you say get away from the outside world come plant with us we got all these extra rooms and you know what i mean come out for a couple of weeks if you can and get away from the madness because i'm we're trying hard to manifest what i say is heaven on earth 
and and really when I go up there on a physical level, oh my God, oh my God, I've never felt so, let me tell you something, and I'm not even trying to be sexual. When I go up on one of them balconies and lay back in that reclining chair, it's post-orgasmic. I'm, I'm, I'm just so at ease. I don't need an orgasm when I'm up there. I'm just floating up in, into the air and the breeze and the sunlight and the quiet, but not much electricity in the air. Beautiful thing. Beautiful, beautiful thing. So, you know, we got ideas coming. But um, let me get back to what I was saying that don't internalize what happens when one of these wayward brothers mess up on you and want to screw your head over and try to make it seem like it's you. Now, if you have something to do with it, you have to take responsibility for those consequences, but don't let him give you too much and you run around feeling like you're inferior and I mess things up or whatever. So now that helps to leave the door open for him because you feel guilty. He put it in your head that it was, you are the reason why. See? See, a lot of these men love to leave a situation where they'll chase you away, but not all the way, where they can always come back. Because if you notice, whenever they start to give you those calls out of nowhere, it's usually something going on in his life that he may need your help. He may need to crash on your couch. You know what I mean? You let him know. Even if you're single, I don't think my man would really agree to that. You know what I mean? Well, who's your man? Well, well, and they think that they have this authority because you had something good before. It may have been real good in certain aspects of your life, but now you found somebody who is more balanced, somebody who is whatever, and some of these men always want to bring it down to the sexual. Well, you know, I know he ain't rocking your world like I, I did. But like I always say, you know, there's a lot of good dick connected to a bunch of fools out here, and that's their only option. And it's like casting at a demon. As soon as you hold strong from having these guys come back in your life, they always want to come around and bring that up. You know, anybody going to eat that thing like me. <laughs> and it's not for you to even say. You hang up the phone. It's like, listen, I'm done with that. You can try all you want, but you know what? I'm in a different world right now. It was you who chased me away or it was you who ran away from me or ran after that thing out in the street. I hope that worked out for you. Quick. And leave it alone. Don't even entertain any conversation with these kind of men. But see, there's a lot of guys who don't understand that. A lot of our sisters and us, I'm not blaming them. They know that they have to work on themselves. And a lot of them are very good at doing that. A lot of, the, of sisters that I know, and I know all those in the chat room here, not that I know your actual personal situation, but most of our sisters here appear to be the type of women that would say, you know what? I just got out of a relationship. I'm going to chill for a while. And when a sister shuts down, it ain't like us dudes. Well, I'm not really looking to get in a relationship. Yeah, but you got that chick around the corner that you go visit every night. You're supposed to cut it all down. Women have this ability that when they, when they, when they shut that, that thing down, it's like it don't even exist. It don't even exist. They, even they, they forget they, that they have it until the month comes. You know what I mean? Where how they say it, oh, my friend is here. My friend is visiting me now. <laughs> they call it names like Lulu. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, had an old girlfriend one time when that time would come. She would call it Red October. <laughs> and if it was two or three days late, we got scared. It's like the hunt for Red October. <laughs> Oh, my friends around, you know. <laughs> no, I'm not saying that in a put down kind of way. That's just in a funny kind of way. But men usually don't have that ability to go celibate and sit down and abstain from things and cleanse themselves and, and even take blame for what has happened. It's like a good boxer who knows that he just knocked the guy out and he had a great performance, but he's humble at the end of the day. How would you rate your performance, Mike? Well, basically, you know, I, I, I know I did good, but I know I could do better because custom model taught me that when I fight a fighter like that, that I need to be able to knock him out early on. And I, I give myself a four and the guy devastated him. Right. But he gave himself a four. Everybody in the world like, man, you can't get no better than that man. Mike Tyson knocked him out. But no, I think I deserve a four because I could always do better. We need to take that kind of attitude because if we do, 
we can improve that much better. Even if it's us, take the blame for it. It's like when I go over to a friend's house, and I always say this as a joke. Now, this is not anything too nasty, but it is kind of extreme. When you go to a friend's house, if you don't want them getting mad at you because you didn't flush the toilet or you didn't clean up after yourself, whatever was there before is yours now because you used the bathroom. So you better leave that toilet clean or don't use it at all. I'm not going to say, oh, that was already there, man. I ain't do that. Nah, man. I won't when somebody comes behind me, there's no doubt. Because I'll get the blame for all them dried up streaks that were already there before I came in there. Or I'll be like, listen, you need to clean this up. I'll use another bathroom. Whatever. Take, 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 for that. It would only make yourself better. Never think too high of yourself. Okay, where the pink parasite dominates, she's going through something. So you think it's just about relationships for her? She got to go on the job too and deal with them Becky's trying to knock her down, but take her information for themselves to promote their other pink parasitic females and Becky's and Karen's. They got to go through struggles too. They want to keep their body in shape or keep themselves. They may feel like they're slipping some kind of way. They got, I'm not, I'm not saying like issues like when a guy, man, you got issues. I don't mean that way. But we have issues. We're getting older. There's certain parts of her life that may be the unknown. She may not have found that person that is in her life and her family might be stressing her. You know, the prior generation can be, in the prior two generations, and as far back as you can go, they can be quite cruel. Girl, you ain't found no man yet. You getting up on, you just turned 30. You better hurry up and get married. And there's a pressure because those types of women from those generations, they'll get married. And it's beautiful when they stand up in church and say, we've been married for 35 years. We've been married for 40 years. But to what? Because lots of times the men that they married ain't no good. But they feel the pressure to keep up a facade. So for a sister who's not married and she's getting to a certain age, I wouldn't say there's anything wrong with her. Now, in some cases there may be. But there are a lot of good women out here that are smart enough not to succumb and fall victim to that whole stigma that you better be married by a certain age. There's so many women that are going through so many different relationships, falling to the pressure of that. And one day they realize, why did I do that? Just because everybody else in my family did that, all the women in my family did that, and I know the issues they had to deal with. But they're not talking about those issues when they stand up in church and, you know, oh, oh, praise God, uh, uh, Mr. and Mrs. So-and-so, you've been married all these years. He could be a closet wino. He can be a closet down low brother. Don't think down low brothers are things that are, are, are new right now. They had that way back in the day. There was a lady that lived across the street from me. And I don't like to call out names, but she's dead and gone. And I did a show about her, Emma Bell. She rented out the upstairs and she was living in the basement. I think she died at 77 years old, but she lived a very fast life, and, and she was looking really old. Nice lady, nice lady, and I wish she was alive right now because she, she would be like that lady that just passed away recently. I used to talk crazy, the grandmother, and she just and she was talking about sex and Gucci and all that stuff. She was just like that. But when she passed away, there was an old crate, not a crate, but like a, like a, like a treasure, treasure chest, and they opened it. And they had a photographer that had all these clear pictures of when she used to be involved in these orgies. And I'm talking about some freak stuff. You know, she had women, she had men, she had this. And she was a pretty woman back then. But you never know. But really and truly, I used to wonder why in her 70s, she used to have all these pretty young girls in their 20s coming over her house and spending the night. Oh, that's my play niece. That's my niece. Okay, yeah, they were turned on what you were doing to them. You never know. But what I'm saying is that we all have something we have to work on, but we can't allow what we are not or refusing to acknowledge to chase all women away. you got to take accountability for what you have to work on, because a lot of times our sisters are so forgiving ahead of time. Well, if, if you can tell her your issues, your hangups, the, the places that you need to become more mature in, but men don't usually want to do that. We want to present this thing like we're perfect. She's going to find out anyway. He's not going to be able to hold up that front for a long time. She's going to find out anyway. See, 
And if you tell her lots of times, she'll say, you know what? I can work with that because she may have some trauma that she's healing from. And you got to work with that. Us as black people, not to make any excuses or anything, but we have a lot to deal with. And a lot of times in our 20s and from our teens, that's when we catch our scars, deep wounds that heal on the outside, but on the inside, it still feels funny. Like when I hit that guy back in 1994 and ripped open my knuckle, I think I knocked like four or five teeth of his out. It ripped up my knuckle that when they stitched it back, I could still feel how limited it was because it wasn't healed on the inside. The outside, healed up, but the inside didn't. It took literally years for me to feel back normal again. And it's still a millimeter or two millimeters for me able to be a, to, uh, uh, to clench and make a fist. You see? So be careful and make sure. It's like buying a used car. Be honest with me. I know this car is not new. I can see there's something, some things that need dealing with. Tell me what it is. So let me make up my mind if I can deal with this, but we are not sensitive enough most of the time as men, those type of men who chase the women away. We got this ego thing going on. We got this macho thing going on and it's all about me and so on. So if you know how to, and I'm saying this in a non-sexual way, if you know how to touch a woman the right way, she will go all out and give you the world in the way that she's made to give it. And the only way you can do that is be authentic because she knows if it's real or not. Now, we have some of our sisters who hunger for a relationship. We are social beings and there's nothing wrong for wanting that. But sometimes because of our upbringing, right, a lot of our sisters who may never have known what a real man was, she may have had a male with her mother or even a father who wasn't a true man, but he was a male who was uh, deficient and many things and didn't give her the right example. So she will hunger for that. And sometimes she will meet a man who really ain't worth crap, but she will superimpose the qualities on him. And you'll have your girlfriend seeing right through him. Girl, you know, you say this about him, but there's something about that man. You need to take it easy. I'm not saying don't deal with him, but take it easy. Take your time. Because a lot of these men are so good at repackaging the same old doo-doo and to bring it to you from things they brought from their other relationships. They are not going to change. They are not going to change. And they figure, well, instead of me facing myself and changing, I will get rid of you who knows every nook and cranny of my dysfunction and repackage it up and bring it to somebody else and play the game all over again. As a man, if I had things to work on and I was single again, I'd say, hey, listen. This is what I need to work on. This is what I'm working on. If you can deal with this sincerely, I'm going to improve. I'm not abusive, but I have these little quirks that I caught from other relationships. And I'm in the process of healing. We can hold back and date and just be friendly with each other until we feel that we can move forward. And you now say that it's okay, it's okay. Look, a lot of these men want to hold on to as much as they can. They break up with somebody and they want to hold on to that person. They keep driving around in your neighborhood. When they see a different car parked up in your driveway three o'clock in the morning, now they want to start calling you. You know what time it is. You got rid of that woman. What do you expect? But a lot of times they don't want to face themselves and they always come off larger than life. Everything's perfect. Take your time and don't go by what he says. Just watch and observe his rhythm. Because if you see two, four, six, eight, nobody has to tell you 10 is coming. If there's three, five, seven, nine, you know 11 is coming next. But if you ask him, he might tell you something completely different. But these brothers who are not sensitive to a woman's needs, and you don't need to be in a relationship if you can't do that. If it's just like the one size fits all, you think all women are the same. And you don't need to be bothered with a woman if you come that way because women are so different. Yeah, you see the breasts and the butt and you see what you can use them for sex for. But the bottom line, it's a whole new lock that, that, that needs a whole new combination. Okay? You don't know what they're feeling. You don't know what they're insecure about. And you have to take time and look past your own gaps and your own voids and really figure it out. There are things that she's going to tell you, and I find that many women are the good women 
they're very honest about it. When you're very honest and there's levels to this thing, you're not just going to sit down for 30 minutes. Come on now, let's just talk about this. Let's just talk about that. And she's going to pour it all out because there are things on the surface that she might say readily. And there are things that may take two or three years for her to really come out with. And if it's like that, say, hey, listen, you don't have to tell me everything because I know there may be some things that are more traumatic. So let's wait on that. But there are, there is more, right? Now, she's got to tell you, yes, there's more, but I'm not ready to tell you this yet. So when you're not sensitive and she doesn't perform the way you want, and I don't mean sexually, but a lot of us get into the whole sex and the feeling and friction, like I said, a lot of us think we have something more in a relationship, but we're only glorified friction providers. You're just masturbating yourselves with each other. The man's brain is somewhere else across town thinking about some delicious, juicy ass that he saw in the mall, thinking about jumping on that, and he's using your body for the warmth for that. And as soon as you don't comply with what he wants, he's ready to ditch you. Look, if you really love that woman, there's things you're going to have to compromise on. What if she was molested and raped as a young girl and forced to perform oral sex on an uncle or an older brother or some neighbor, and she's traumatized that way? Then you're going to have to deal with that. You got to face, listen, are you going to deal with a couple of years of not getting no blowjobs? Do you really love this woman? Are you willing to take on everything? Because as men, most of the time, we only want to take the good parts. We don't take the other parts we got to work on. I don't care what situation you get into. After a certain age, guaranteed, I'm not going to say everybody was raped, but there's a certain amount of trauma that they've had to go through uh, from the other men. Like Minister Farrakhan said, don't, you know, you can quote me on this and you can quote him on this. Every time you find what you call a no good woman, it's because of a no good man, right? Some man did, and it may not be rape. It may be psychological violations. It may be emotional abuse. The woman may look good and confident, but deep down she may not be. She had things in the past that she has to work on. Why don't you come into her life and look to add something in instead of just looking at her for friction? Because trust me, if you help her to heal, if you make her feel loved, if you show her that you're committed no matter what, that you're always going to be there, no matter what kind of arguments you have, trust me, that sweet friction that she can give, trust me, it's nothing like it. And it's not just merely friction, because like I said, lust and love, the real love and a sprinkling of lust. She's a woman. You're going to see her, the shape of her this and the shape of her that. But the essence and energy that she has, that's the thing that's sexy about her. You understand? You can't whip that. You can't replace that. Men, let me tell you something. Have you ever noticed how? Let's get down to the nitty gritty. You ever notice how you with one woman? And maybe these are back in your days where you're slipping and tipping. You end up with another woman that night or the next day, and her energy is so completely different. And you're like, what in the hell am I doing here? There's nothing good to this at all. Sometimes they perform acts on you and you can't even feel it. It's about the energy. It's that about that forever energy. And a lot of us are like skimming rocks on the surface of a lake before they drop. And we jump, jump, jump. You know when you skim a stone, you pick up a stone, a nice smooth one, and you throw it along the surface of the water, and the kids are playing. Look, my mine skipped two times. It hits the surface and jumps back up. Boom, and it falls. Some, it can go three. Some, it can go four. One time I did it, and I did it perfect, and it skipped five. But after a while, that rock and the speed is going to slow down, and it's going to succumb to the weight of itself and fall. And a lot of times with these type of men who chase women away or just use them, after a while, they get to a certain age, they see the mortality, they find a little aches and pains, they start reaching for the blue pills, and after a while, the blue pills don't work. And they say, oh, my God, I'm getting old. And now the old player is coming around looking for a woman to take care of his old ass, his old broken down ass. And they see you, even if you're older than him, the same age, even younger, he'll, he'll commit now because he can't do nothing no more. He's retired out on the pasture. He can't be high in the rankings for the championships out there anymore. So he wants to retire. And who the hell does he think he is that you're going to take him in? Now, you don't mind if he's committed his whole life to you and shown you that. And still, we got some kind of women out here that are not too good that will dump his ass as soon as there's nothing good with him or start having affairs on him, you know, when he gets too old to do the do. 
We got to be very careful and take your time. We jump into things too fast. And I'm not blaming the sisters, but there are a lot of men who hold back those different things about them and they don't let you know. How about transparency? That's the best thing when you meet somebody that they can give you once you realize that you want to commit to them. But that's the word commit. Do you want to commit? Like that skipping stone, we jump from one relationship to the next and realize and look around and we are senior citizens and we realize the mess that we found ourselves in. But we should have took a few years. Brothers, what's wrong with that? Stay away from the sex. You know, it's hard to do. All these pretty girls out here smiling at you and pretty shapes and all of this stuff. But you got to realize that you will attract better when you create yourself to be better. You will find your level if you're fraudulent. And we all find our levels. There's no way you can hang with a good woman and you a rotten man who didn't want to deal with the things that are inside of you. And you will chase her away every time because she realizes that you are not on her level. Yeah, I said it. And there are men who attract women who are not on their level. But usually it's the other way around. You know, I'm talking about for the good women out here. And you have a lot of women who are like, listen, I am not looking for no relationship. I'm not wasting my time. They are not that stereotypical modern woman. And a lot of us brothers accuse the good sisters of that lots of times. Oh, you one of them modern women. No, I'm not dealing with your bullshit. Just because you got a piece of dick hanging down to your knees, you can bring me misery and mess up my mind and topple over and mess up, mess up my whole family. Because when the two people come together, you're actually connecting with their families. And if you hurt their daughter or you hurt their sister, or you hurt their mama, it's going to bother them. One of them may end up in jail or prison dealing with your ass. So it's best to pull yourself off of that so you don't get caught up in that reactionary kind of relationship. Oh, I got the side chick who I can just run to now. Well, why couldn't you run to her before? And then when you get the side chick running after her, you're getting another one because you can't deal with one. You always got to have something on the side, which means you're not fully committed into the initial relationship in the first place. If you do right by that woman that you're with, that you deemed as being worthy and you're cleaning yourself out and you're transparent with her, you don't have to worry about a little insurance on the side. So many fathers tell their men this, their young men this, their, their, their boy children this. Well, you know, you always got to keep that stash of money. You never know. And you never know. You always got to better just don't cut all the women off now. You always got. So if I'm investing in all of these other women, I'm, I'm not investing in the thing that I have. Why am I doing that? It doesn't make any sense. Spreading yourself thin. Because when you win in a relationship, there's no feeling in the world like it. But it's a chance that you take. But it doesn't have to be that much of a chance. You got to lay down the foundation and be careful of these men who will chase you away, who will lose you. And you think you got it going on after a few years and all of a sudden, you find something out about his personality, he smacks you across the face. He says something hurtful to you. He brings up something in your past and uses it to hurt you. You're, you're, you're there in the most vulnerable way. And he stabs you up that way. Sometimes an actual stab wound, you can deal with more than what they turn against you and put out there. The beauty of a relationship is that you can be vulnerable. The beauty of a relationship is that you can open up after these men who don't seem to respond to you emotionally thinking that you can because these men will let you know after a while you know what they say when a person lets you know who you better you better believe it. when they show you their true self you better believe it it's true and a lot of us feel okay a lot, a lot of our sisters have that mothering spirit i'm not trying to say they're trying to be somebody's mother but they have that mother in spirit. Oh, he's, he's hurting now. I know what happened. I can help to change him. I can help to make it better. And some of these bastards are using that pity routine, like the lion that has the thorn in his paw, and you're going to go and you're going to pull out that thorn, and he'll be eternally grateful to you. You might go over there and pull out that thorn, and he just bites your head off. Like the snake that bit the person after the, the person tried to help the snake, and the snake said, well, what do you expect? I'm a snake. So if these dudes seem unlovable and unreachable, 
Don't extend yourself too much because they're going to chase you away at the end of the day and, you, and your girlfriend's going to say, girl, I told you, girl, he never made no effort to reach back out to you this way. It was always you paying the bills. It was always you calling him up. It was always you going over to his house to see if he's okay and cook food and whatever. And then you, then you brought the nigga in. That was the worst thing you could have done. Brought him in under your roof. I tried to tell you when you were going to work, he had your car and there was a couple of women in there that didn't, well, we know you didn't know him. Well, that same car was across town and I can't tell you. I'm not saying it's all bad, but this thing has become a game of let me get you before you get me. It's not even about love anymore. It, it, it's like a game. And like I said yesterday, the sexuality is, is, is like some fight, like some battle. I'm going to dig her guts out. I'm going to rock your world. Can you handle this? I'm going to break your back. Like I said yesterday, do you want to break the back of somebody you love? You, you know what it's like to have a broken back? I had a slip disc and the pain was bad. I, a young lady told me the slip disc was just as bad as when you're giving childbirth. I said, for real? This is crazy. So, you know, it's, it's, it's rare. Just like when they say when you have a friend. And we're talking about males who may have a male friend or female friend or a female who may have a female friend or a male, just friends. Very limited on one hand how many really true good friends that you'll have in this lifetime. And that's friends. So how about relationships at work? Maybe you can hit the jackpot. Early on, because there are people who have done that. We dated in high school. We got married at the college, and we've been happily ever after ever since. And some people have to go through one relationship after another because they don't want to check themselves on the inside. And a lot of us get gullible. A lot of us get weak. A lot of these men truly are players. They can discern your spirit and figure out what you need in your heart and get to you between your legs or in your mouth and have access to those orifices and the other third one in the back, if that's the way it is, because they know how to be so slick to manipulate you, to have you where they want you, and they don't want you. And when they're done with you, they don't mind chasing you away. And there are men out there who really want to try and sometimes don't get it right because they didn't have any guidance. So those are the men that we want to really share certain things with in the shows and you know the articles that we write and all of us across the internet should speak on those things in the areas where we have had obstacles and we defeated them and were successful on that level. Because when it comes down to it, it's not just about dollars and cents. Oh, they make X amount of money. Oh, they have a couple of condos for rent in this big, beautiful house and they got three cars and they're all paid for and you might be walking into a living hell. Give me a second while I take another sip of this water. Hold on, y'all. Mm -mm -mm. Water tastes like Kool-Aid to me in this hot African sun. <laughs> mm. Oh, God. This is beautiful. This is beautiful. I know we um, started late because we were outside. I'm going to continue on. I'm going to continue on. But yeah, why is it that it seems like, and we know others have relationship issues, but our vibes and our issues are different from theirs. But why is it does it seem that our stuff just can't work? Why is it? And I look at couples that get together early on and it's all peaches and cream. It's all sweet. And I'm not a doomsayer. But I cross my fingers and say, boy, I hope that works out. Because I've seen too many examples where just as intense as it was in the beginning, when th things hit toward the end and things come out, it could be really vicious and it doesn't even look anywhere near what it looked like in the beginning. You know? Wow. Oh, wow. That's crazy. I'm not even looking at the chat room. Something told me to look at it. <laughs> he said, how to chase away a woman. Just tell the bear you ain't got no, no more money. Well, it's not really about that. It's not that we want to really chase away the woman, right? And I understand what you're saying, and you're talking about those kind of women who are only after you for money. That's not some long-term prospect for a relationship. 
you go around to these places where you have these women who they got three and four men just for money or they're just looking at you for that of course in a in a in a, in a healthy relationship when you're running things you know in this world if you're in the system money's gonna have to be there to hold things down but a real woman who's with the man seriously she knows what kind of man he is she's gonna stick with him because you see till death do you part what happens if you know you have a hard-working man who is going to be there for you and he takes ill and he can't work for two years and you working, but now what comes into the household is drastically reduced. Do you run away from him and say, well, you ain't making no more money. I got to leave. You know that if something happened with you, he'll take care of you. That's the kind of commitment you have to have. But because everything is based on cash and based on items and things, we never get a chance to really know each other. So these brothers have got to really work on themselves because why would you even want to have somebody that you can say, I don't have any more money and all of a sudden they want to run. Why would you want to be with a woman like that anyway? Not to say, take me in because I'm broke. Take me in because I don't want to do anything. No, you got to be ambitious. You got to have something that you've been working on long before you got with her. You need to be able to show her what you're all about. Not where, oh, well, you know, I've been playing Nintendo or Xbox for the last couple of years. I do get the high score, but you know, I've been trying to work and find some jobs in the last couple of years and no, man, what is it that puts fire up under your backside that you like to do, that you do, that you can turn over into something that earns you money? What are you passionate about? It's not just getting some job, oh, I'm going to hand you over some money. Look, there's things I do that I don't even hardly get no money, and I'm passionate about it. What are you passionate about? What are your goals? What is, what is your vision? That's how you turn a woman on. Don't care how big or small your dick is. If you got some dream that you've been working on, she can't help but be melted. Like, wow, this is amazing. Look what he does from sun up to sundown. And he's making a little bit of money from it. And he's coming up with ideas to make my life more secure. If you can't secure the woman to make her feel secure, I don't care how much she may make more than you. I don't care how much six figures she makes. She wants to know that she has a man that got her back. Even if you only make $55,000 a year, she knows that you're there, but she knows that you got two or three other things that you're working on to bring that money up. Not just because you're scared of losing her. That's got to be in you anyway. She wants to ride with a winner. And even when the winner is down and might not be making any money at all, she knows that you have that certain kind of spirit where you might be down for now. But give him a couple of weeks. He'll be right back building everything up again, just like those ants that you see in those little ant hills that your foot might make a mistake and knock down. The ants don't chase you down and cuss you out. I'm going to crawl up in the bed and bite you on your balls later on when you're sleeping. Nah, they let you go and they start picking up the grains of dirt and building up that ant hill immediately. So you have to be that kind of man. If you're not that kind of man, you're going to chase any prospects of being with a good woman away. I said good woman. Because there's some women who just say, oh, well, you got a little room, you share a bunch of roaches in there and it's funky and stink and dirty socks and underwear. I'll come over and sp spend time with you. You don't want no woman like that. And if you were in that position in the situation that I just described, you, ain't, you don't want that too long either. Who wants to be in that kind of a situation? When you're a champion and you're a winner, you will attract. So that's why as a man, you got to work on yourself. And stop being, it's not just about money. Money does play a part of it. But it's about you, how good you are with money. If you waste money, you're not going to attract that woman because you can make all the money in the world and spend it down gambling and there's nothing left. What are you building toward? And if you are a good man that has fallen for some reason, and that woman who, doesn't, who hasn't even gotten with you has observed you for a while, she knows that's a good man. I can build with him. You can talk all the sugar and honey iced tea on the phone that you want. Yeah, girl, I know you're over there listening to what I'm telling you. You're getting wet. Stability should make a good woman wet. Just like I said about being pussy whipped. Pussy whip me with respect. Because that other stuff wears down if you don't respect me. It's not just about sex with the woman. You unlock that when you're a good man. Being who you are with those attributes that permeate down into her soul and says, this here is the man for me. It has nothing to do with anything else. Yeah, you got to be clean. Yeah, you got to, you know, not be all over the place and have some track record where you don't went have, through, through half a girlfriend's. 
that you took time and you built something of your own, whether it is on a job. We, we don't really want to focus on job per se, but many of us are still on jobs. Make the best of it. Learn all you can. Learn all Learn to do your own thing and emulate what you see there. There's always a next level. If you're a man who's not looking for the next level, guess what? What can you do for her? You're sitting there looking at her. You're supposed to be a problem solver. You're supposed to be one who, you're supposed to be one who figures things out. You understand? Even she may have an issue. She's going to come to you with it. Even if you don't have the answer right away, you say, you know what? Let me take my time. And think about this. Give me two days, sweet humble. We're going to find an answer with this. You know, she doesn't expect you to figure everything out all the way. So when you have issues and challenges in life, you may have money issues out of nowhere. Maybe there was a family, a relative that needed to be buried and it fell on your back and you weren't ready for that or weren't equipped for that. And it threw your money off. And other things happen. You know, sometimes you can be riding high, look around, and it's like, I don't understand how I fell deep into this hole. And you got to take your time and have the brains and the wherewithal to figure it out. I don't care how big your dick is. I don't care how your tongue game is. If you can't figure out an issue in your life that's major, all of that romantic stuff and all of that sexual stuff means nothing. It's almost a mockery. I got this big dick brother over here who doing. She ain't going to feel it. She'll be admiring the dude who ain't hung as you or don't look good as you. He may not have a six pack. He might got a little gut he got to work on, but this dude is getting it, getting it, figuring it out, solving problems, making businesses, figuring things out, making things better. 24 hours a day, he's trying to make his life better. Who the hell cares if you got the high score on the Xbox? Who the hell cares if you, you, you gamble a little bit and she got tired of it, but you lucked out and got a whole lot of money? That's not a career. And digging her guts out is not going to do anything for her. She might feel it a little bit. She's going to feel it less and less. It's nice to have the lights out when you're making love sometimes. Sometimes you want to see what's going on. But it's not nice when you don't have a choice at all because the light bill ain't been paid. How about that? Put all that food and put it in the refrigerator, and the refrigerator don't work because the lights are off. Now her favorite ice cream, she got to hurry up and eat because it ain't going to stay frozen. Security. If you can't secure the woman in her life, I don't care if she makes a million dollars. You still got to bring and work at full capacity from where you stand. I don't care if she makes a million dollars and you only make $50,000 a year. You still got to bring it as a man. You still ain't looking for, you still trying to take care of all the bills as a man and figure it out. Now, I'm not going to say that you have to succumb. Well, well my money is my money and, and your money is my money. She's in there with you, too, because she sees your spirit. Granted, the good woman, we're not talking about these women out here in the street who are gold diggers. We ain't talking about that at all, right? We're going to focus on those good sisters, but you got to come right because you will chase them away. You show that facade of a fake person, and as it melts away and they see you for who you truly are, this is how sometimes affairs start. She's a good woman. You've heard her so much. She's still holding on, but there's somebody who takes time and charms her, takes time and lets her know that he understands what she's going through. And she may be in a situation with you where you're taking care of most of the stuff and she does a little something and she still loves you and she doesn't want to violate. But more and more, again, just like that mixed in song that's coming next at the club where the DJ is bringing that one in and phasing that other one out. He begins to look better and better with each passing day. And then you come home and you see him and in contrast, you know, it always starts from talking. Thank you so much, Tyrone Bates, liberal, much love and appreciation. I thank you for the donation. It's coming in really handy these days, I'm telling you. Really handy. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. But it's the truth. And we need to be verbal with each other and not hold things in. But sometimes when a woman is hurt, she's not going to tell you, baby, you ain't talked to me half a day. What's wrong? Sometimes they're so hurt. You, and there's certain things you should be sensitive enough to already know. You should already know this thing. Or figure it out. Or observe something ain't right. 
you know, of course you're going to go to her and say, hey, you know, I know we've been a little distance, distant these last few weeks. We've both been working hard. We had that argument. We haven't really gotten over it. You apologize and, and let you, you let her know exactly what it is that you said and how it affected her. Let her know that you understand the damage that you did. But some of us men, I don't care about that, bit, man. You know, she always be walking around here quiet, man. I ain't no mind reader. Well, if you allow the rift to happen and continue on, then you don't need to be in that relationship then now, now, right? And there's certain things that you should already know. Now, I know sometimes it's hard to deal with a woman who may not speak much, but the signs are there. You know, sit down and say, hey, I'm, I, I want to hear from you. You need to tell me. And, and let that be a thing in the beginning of your relationship that you speak about. When we have a challenge, or what many people say are problems, be willing to sit down and talk about it at the opportune time. Don't do it when your in-laws are all in the house. Don't do it around all her girlfriends. Don't do it when she comes home tired from work. Do some things together and let her know, listen, sometime this weekend, we have to speak about this particular issue because for us to ignore it is only going to drive a bigger rift between us and we'll begin to imagine things that are not already there and it will become worse. Let's patch this thing up right now. Let's nip it in the bud at some point this weekend. We're not leaving out this weekend without dealing with this issue. Other than that, I'll let you choose a time when you want, and we are still going to do things together. It ain't going to be where you're in one room and I'm in the next. We ain't talking and passing each other in the kitchen and all that stuff. That is toxic. Communication is very important. But you know what? I find it's the men who really don't really want to get down on the communication tip. They get mad and figure the woman should know everything. And he doesn't have to be sat down and made to be accountable for some of the things that he's doing or not doing. We have to keep ourselves humbled. I don't mean subservient, like in some bad way, whatever, like, oh, I ain't gonna be a subservient or submissive. It's a good way to do that. Imagine. And you relate to this on a sexual level. If you've ever been with somebody who is a giver and you're a giver and both of y'all are giving and giving so much you, you can receive now in abundance because you both are giving because there's joy to giving. Yeah, on that sexual level. And we'll speak about the sexual thing. I'm not always going to talk about it like it's got to be just that. But brothers, some of y'all some of y'all are just so selfish in the bedroom. You're trying to get her to do you. And when you get yours, now you know exactly what I'm saying. I don't have to get graphic for this. And when you get yours, you roll over and leave her flat. Now, sometimes she might hit you off so well that you just fall out. She can understand that. She'll take pride and joy in how she relieves you of the pressures of the world. But all the time you expect this, chauvinistic men walking to the door, snapping their finger and pointing down at their crotch. Girl, you better get over here and get to work. Oh, no. She might do that once or twice, but you better get to work, brother. It's about giving. Why can't you cater to her? It makes it better for you. If I do better for you, and cater to you, you're going to do better for me. You're going to want to do it. I said, man, he treats me so nice. He lets me just feel so good. And he is not selfish. He has patience. He takes his time. And anyway, when she has an orgasm, that should be your, your orgasm too. You should feel so good that you brought her to this point that you fall out with your eyes rolling out in the back of your head. Because that should be a mutual thing. It should be a mutual journey. Not where, oh, I'm just providing you with a little bit of friction. And, and you better be glad you're getting that. It shouldn't be, uh, uh, I'm going to get mine, you're going to get yours thing. We're going to get ours. We're going to indulge in what we enjoy. And I enjoy pleasing you. And I enjoy making you feel good. And not only that, but you got to know the right things to say when you are administering this pleasure. Sitting there looking all quiet, making faces, whatnot. No, that's the biggest time when you can communicate to a subconscious mind. And, 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 and just reinforce the commitment, you know, sweetheart. And you can talk about giving her some good head or inside of her. It's just so glorious to be here with you, to know that while we enjoy the physical pleasures, I can see the pleasure of both of us getting old together, of always being there with each other. You know how good that makes her feel? 
The brothers focus on just the physical so much, and they miss out on the opportunity to get all up in her subconscious mind as you should open up and let her get up inside yours. The most glorious feeling is to be whipped, and it's not just about the pussy. They say pussy whipped. Oh, he done got pussy whipped. It's much more to pussy whipping than pussy whipping. Then if you can be pussy with the you just a shallow person, when you are whipped is one of the most glorious feelings in the world. Whip me, but also whip me with respect. Whip me with honor. You see? So you can't dick whip, whip a woman. Why would you want to just do that? That's going to feel good anyway. But let her know how much you respect her. Let, 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 you, let her know how much you see that she's a hard worker and appreciate her for the dedication that she's given to you. And I'm always going to be here with you. When she hears those things while being intimate with you, it ain't just that moaning and groaning and the ugly faces you make when you're on top of her, looking like you're being electrocuted and making cow noises. <laughs> she can tolerate that when they have the real thing behind it, but this is a time for deeper communication. This, this, is, a, this is like a chaser. Like with the words that you, it gets in deeper. It's just like herbs, they say. When you take one herb, it's good. But when you take, what is it now? Uh, what's the one, the Indian one that, um, that, that, that kills cancer? When you take, um, oh God, it's the tip of my tongue. Come on, y'all, you'll know what I'm talking about. When you take black pepper with that particular herb, it becomes three times more potent because of the presence of the pepper. So when you have this opportunity, and this doesn't mean you're going to rattle off some big, big memo, you know, since we've been together and I've been loving you from back years ago. It's like, shut up, man. They don't want to hear that, but you can drop a word in there. You can moan it in her ear. Even when she's pleasuring you, let her know. Let her know. Wow, he feels this way about me. He's thinking this about me, not just telling her how fine she looks or oh, damn, baby, I love your ass. Damn, look how sexy that ass looks. Yes, that's part of it. But let's get down to the thing when both of y'all are 80 years old and her ass is withered and puckered and, and shriveled up because it's about the person on the inside. And the lovemaking should be even better. And you shouldn't even see it that way. Because when you're with somebody that long and you have a real love form and the physical fades, you still see it like a person who had an accident or they were in the service and got their leg blown off, but they can still feel it. See, just like that old couple that walks down the street. And the, like the story I told about the man who he's about 80 years old. And they've been married about 50 something years. And when he holds his woman by his side, you can't tell him that he can't beat a football team. He's her protector. No matter how old he is, no matter how short he got over the years where his belt line is two inches under his nipple, he still thinks and feels. And you know what? Because she's by his side, he will probably do it. <laughs> he ain't scared of nothing. Baby, don't worry. I got this. Them three little thug guys over there, let them come over here. I got something for them. And probably could hardly stand up. And in his mind, that's a beautiful thing. You want to, yeah, turmeric. Yes, I look back, yeah, turmeric, right, right. Oh, man, I'm a little fatigued in a good way. Putting out all this content, got more to come. And we're just going to keep rolling and keep rolling and just doing it because this is what we do. We built for this. This is what we do. I'm going to talk a little bit about this more later on. And um, this is an ongoing topic that we talk about no matter how we turn the title in, right? It's just like the black church and the things that they go in like we did last week, a lot of those church shows. We're going to come back with more of those. We just change the title around, but it gets right back down to the real nitty gritty. I could not even tell you all the things I want to say on this topic, because the more I talk, the more I realize, like, wow, there's more and more to say. But I'm just so glad that I can end up on a computer after we took a little walk. And I'm interested in seeing how this looked on the phone. And there's a couple more little gadgets that I want to get outside of the phone to make things better that way. And a lot of my things have been breaking and busting and, you know, just not working. But that, that's what happens because, you know, I kind of dog myself. I take care of my stuff, but I kind of dog it out because I'm always out there. But, yeah, I'm going to wrap this down. I get a little piece of something to eat and I'm trying to get the scurve back on alive with me. Don't.
can hear me. It pays to have the phone on. Yeah, for some reason there's a glitch, but on the computer it cut off for some reason and my phone is still working, but I am gonna wrap it down. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm gonna get some turmeric and pepper since we're talking about that, Tracy J. But let me know if you can hear me. I think I can be heard right now, I'm on the phone and I am wrapping it down. Okay, good, good, great, great, great. Let's put these uh, earphones on in the proper place. You gotta be ready, you see? If I wasn't ready, if I didn't keep that phone on, I would've been in trouble. Don't know what that is, but you gotta be ready for the unexpected. I think what I'm gonna do after I eat, I'm gonna do a little rooftop, come on back down, maybe upload some stuff, work on some stuff, and then uh, come on back. I think she went and took a nap. She'll do that this time of day, because she is kind of tired. She works up there, you know, seven, eight, nine hours, going in from the crack of dawn and leaving after it gets dark. I mean, just out there doing it, you know? I'm good for lifting heavy things, but the way she's bending and stretching and moving and constantly moving, there's no um, there's no yoga, there's no uh, 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 kind of class she can take that would just work her the way it is. That's why she's even though she, she's a little slim, she's very strong. You know what I mean? And then later on, like I said, maybe we have take some call-ins, whatever. You know, the day's not over for me yet. It is four four what now? Four forty six. 4.46 p.m. I know on the East Coast over there, you're coming up near 12 noon. It's weird for me. And that's why sometimes I can't sleep at night because my mind is over there time-wise. You know, when I wake up, I say, oh, my God, it's so late. It's so early over there. So I'm, I'm not even trying to recalibrate and change over because my heart is on the East Coast. My body's here and my heart is here also. But in doing these shows, I keep it toward aimed toward the East Coast and um, the West Coast will follow through. But anyway, I'm going to sign off right now and just want you to know I love you all. And I'm going to eat and I think I'm going to do a little rooftop and take a nap myself. I think I'm going to do that. <laughs> you know, if I was here by myself, then maybe I wouldn't do that. But that's just the way it is, you know. So anyway, much love to you all. I will be back. I bombard you with all different types of work. And.